Hey, um, my name is Holly Bilbury, and um, I have three boys, Damien, Alex, and Samuel, and I'm married to James, and um, I'm here to share my testimony with you today. So, I wrote it down, so I'm just going to be reading it. So, here we go. I grew up in a Baptist church. I was there every time the doors were open. I got saved and baptized when I was about 10 years old. I had a great childhood growing up in a very close-knit family with two brothers and a sister. My mother was a very conservative woman while my dad was a bit on the wilder side. He played in bands and so his nickname was Hollywood. So I'm actually named after my dad. I loved my mom and my dad both so much, but there was no doubt that I was daddy's girl. He was my best friend. Life seemed to be perfect until I turned 16. My dad went into the hospital to have surgery. He seemed to be doing great. I went to visit him on the third day, and the next day he was supposed to be coming home. He never made it back home because he passed away that night. The doctors resuscitated him and hooked him up to machines, but by that time, my daddy was brain dead. On May 2nd of 2003, my life was forever changed. I didn't believe it was real until I got to the funeral home and saw him laying there in the casket. Even after the funeral was over, I felt like my dad would be coming home soon. I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't even cry or grieve. I held all that hurt in and all the grief turned into anger. I became hard-hearted. I became abusive to the ones who loved me the most. I blamed everything on my mother. I lost my mind. I went into a very deep depression and I didn't want to live anymore. During this time, I started doing drugs and drinking at the age of 18. Doing this numbed the pain and helped me to cope, so I thought. I met my husband James when I was almost 19 years old. I ended up moving in with him about a month after I met him. This broke my mother's heart. I was living in complete rebellion. After about eight months of living together, we started drinking pretty heavily. At this point, we were living in full-blown sin, drinking, doing drugs, sex before marriage, and living together. It was a slippery slope. After four years of living together, James and I finally got married. James worked out of town full-time. He was gone most of the time and only came home every other weekend. This left me raising his two children on my own. I worked full-time and was a full-time stepmama. Three months after getting married, I found out I was pregnant. This made me so happy. James conti continued traveling throughout my whole pregnancy. When I was eight months pregnant with Alex, my whole world came crashing once again. We had $4,000 saved for a down payment on a house. I went to the bank only to find out our money was gone. James had spent the money on drugs. I was so angry and my trust was completely broken. He said he was sorry and promised me that he would never, that it would never happen again. On October 30th, 2009, we welcomed our first son together, Alex. This was one of the best days of my life. We had a fresh start. When Alex turned eight weeks old, James started traveling again. Shortly after this, James revealed to me that he was a meth addict and had been using crack cocaine and pills as well. I felt so betrayed and couldn't trust him once again. I felt completely alone. I wound up having an affair on him. We were both living a lie. We argued constantly and our lives became a living hell. So as a result, we continued to go deeper into drugs and alcohol. Three years after the affair, out of spite and an argument, I told James about it. He was devastated. We agreed to seek marriage counseling. We still attended church throughout all of this, although nobody knew the hell we were going through. The church put on a seminar called The Art of Marriage, and we decided to attend. I truly believe this is where God began restoring our marriage. Around this time was the 90-day revival. I got filled with the Holy Ghost during the revival. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I received power and didn't even know it. I would definitely need it for what was coming. James was still doing dope and trying to hide it from me. On top of that, my stepsons hated me. My husband and I began to fight physically. The day I decided to leave was the day that he was so high on drugs 
that he told me if I tried to leave and take Alex from him that he already had my grave dug in the backyard. That was it. I had had enough. I took my son and we left. We moved in with my brother. James had no idea we were even gone for two days. He finally realized we were gone and came looking, but I refused to go back home with him. During this time was the Mom's Awakening Conference of 2015. I didn't want to go because I was too busy drowning my sorrows, but something told me to go, so I did. Nobody at church knew what I was going through. I kept it all to myself. James and I were filing for divorce. We were done, and nobody knew this except for my family. I'm so glad I went to that conference. That's where I received my promise from the Lord. They did an altar call, and I decided to go up front. One of the ladies came up behind me and started prophesying in tongues. They said, the Lord said, you must restore your relationship with me before you can restore your relationship with your husband. I hit the floor crying because I knew it was God. He answered my prayer. It was at that point that I knew that I couldn't give up on my husband. It was my time to dive into the word and that's exactly what I did. I made my closet my, my, prayer, my secret place where I would pray and read my Bible. I made Jesus welcome in my life and in my home. I made a bed for him and an end table with a candle on it. If Jesus was going to come by, I sure didn't want him passing me up. I truly believe that that's when the Lord began to work a miracle in my husband and my marriage. James and I decided to meet up a few days later so that Alex could see him. We had a disagreement and he started to cuss me. I stopped and I told him that I walk in authority with the Lord and you will not talk to me like that anymore. Something broke in him at that moment. Alex and I went back to my brother's house. I called James later on that night and decided to ask him to church. He said, heck no, I'm not coming to church. I'm home, meth, and been up for days. I just told him to come as you are. I went on to church that day, definitely not expecting James to show up. To my surprise, he showed up, and as soon as he got there, Pastor Kevin made an altar call at the beginning of service. James went down. The enemy whispering in my ear the whole time that this was all a show. He's just doing this to get back with you. He's done this a million times before. So while I was listening to the devil, a man walks up behind me and says, Honey, ain't you going to go down and be with your husband at the altar? I told him, No, I didn't plan on it. He said, Well, you better because he's being de delivered and set free as we speak. That was another confirmation from God. Pastor did another altar call at the end of service, and James went down again and gave his life to Christ that day. I rededicated my life to the Lord that day as well. The next day, the day after my husband got saved, he had a golf ball-sized abscess come up on his jaw. He went to the dentist, and they put him on antibiotics for three days, and after the three days, they were going to pull his tooth. I had not yet moved back home, but decided to go by and see James that day. When I got there, he was laying on the couch lifeless. He had his Bible in his hands, and he was listening to his newfound Christian music. As I got closer to him, I thought he was dead. I touched him, on, I touched him and he was cold and clammy. I shook him, and he wouldn't wake up. I kept shaking him, and he finally came to. He looked up at me with tears flowing down his face and told me how sorry he was, begging me to forgive him for everything he had put me through. So, of course, I forgave him. The abscess had moved from his jaw down to the neck and shoulder. I called the dentist and he said, emergency room now. He said the infection has moved from his mouth and could be going to his heart and that he would have to have IV antibiotics to save his life. The devil was trying to kill him. So the kids and I all got together and joined hands and rebuked the devil off his life. We got to the hospital and I'm here to tell you that he only had to have three shots. We were only there for an hour, and he walked out of that hospital with no IV antibiotics to save his life because Jesus saved his life. I decided to go back home that day. We decided to do a blessing over our home and anoint our house, which is something we had never done before. Before this, there was so much evil in our house that every time someone would get angry, the lights would flicker. Very weird things would happen. We would sit around in the dark a lot, and yet our light bill was over $400. Pictures would fall off the walls, and things in our home were constantly breaking. 
One night, I was in the middle of a dead sleep and the blankets flipped off of us. It was the devil trying to scare me. I remember the Lord speaking to me, Joshua 1, 9, and the verse read, I have, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I knew then that I was safe. When we did the blessing, we had to get rid of anything that was not pleasing to the Lord. After that, that's when the warfare began. My husband had finally taken his spiritual authority over our home and started the blessing. I won't ever forget him saying, Devil, you are not even allowed here in the power lines in this home anymore. The Lord is the only one welcome here in the name of Jesus. We casted the devil out of our house that day and watched Satan literally run out of our house. We literally saw doors slamming shut. So the next day was Palm Sunday and we were getting ready to go to church. Alex put in a Christian CD and all of a sudden, all the power goes out in our house. We thought someone might have hit the power pole or something, so we didn't think anything of it. As we were pulling out of the driveway, we noticed the transformer was on fire and our power line was cut in half. EPB couldn't explain it, but we knew exactly what it was. It was the Lord not letting the devil back in the power lines of our home. God was showing us his power. The following week was Easter at the ball field at the Lookout Stadium, and my whole family was baptized in front of the whole city of Chattanooga that day. God had worked a miracle in my family, and I will forever be grateful. Two months later, I found out I was pregnant with Samuel. I call him our family restoration baby. I didn't know until a little later that I was actually pregnant with twins. When I was about nine weeks pregnant with the twins, I found out that James had backslid and relapsed. I ended up losing baby B around 10 weeks of pregnancy. I was devastated. I knew what I had to do. I had to let go and let God. I had to surrender it all to him. James had left for the weekend and while he was gone, the evangelism team came over to my house to pray. One of the ladies prayed, God, even if it takes James losing his job to quit doing drugs, then so be it. About two weeks later, on August 13th, 2015, James quit his job where he was making $60,000 a year with benefits to get away from the drugs. He ended up changing his phone number as well. Little by little, I was finally able to trust him again. Praise the Lord and to God be the glory that my husband has been clean and sober since that date. God saw his heart and blessed him with his own business. He named it PGD Construction, which stands for Praising God Daily Construction. I ended up getting put on bed rest when I was 29 weeks pregnant with Samuel. I went to have my 3D ultrasound and they couldn't get a reading. The doctor came in and said, you're going to the hospital to have your baby today. Your baby has no fluid around him and without fluid, he will not survive. He has a much better chance at life on the outside rather than on the inside. I immediately called the church and had them start a prayer chain. So many prayers went up for Samuel. They hooked me to an IV and honored, monitored me for a couple days. My fluid ended up going up to a 3 and the normal is at a 10. I was able to go home on Christmas Eve. I was on very strict bed rest, but I refused to stay home from church. A couple of weeks later, Pastor Kevin called me up front and had Pastor Devin lay hands on my belly. They declared complete healing and that I would carry my baby to full term. I went to the high-risk doctor that next day and my fluid had went from a 3 to an 8. Praise the Lord! I had to continue going to the high-risk doctor twice a week. They told me that Samuel had a heart defect, a hole in his heart. They also told me that he only had one kidney. Prayers continued to go up and God completely healed my baby in the womb. I carried him full term and had him at 37 weeks. My God is healed. James and I prayed that he would be big enough to where we could carry him home with us and let him be healthy enough to where he doesn't have to go to the NICU. Sure enough, he was born at five pounds and three ounces. My baby was completely healthy with both kidneys and no heart defect. God is so faithful. He has answered many prayers and completely restored my marriage and my family. He delivered us and set us free. I thank him every day for everything he has done in our lives. And I pray he always keeps me humble. 
never to forget where he brought me from. I hope this is an encouragement to someone. With God, all things are possible. You gave your life.